This is part one of our video series on subprograms, and this is the introduction to explain what exactly is a function and a procedure. I'm going to look at functions and procedures that are currently being already designed or programmed in Delphi that we use all the time. Um, you might not have known that you were using a function or procedure, but you probably have used a couple. So let's play a little show quickly. We're going to play the game called Is It a Function or Is It a Procedure? So I'm going to have a, a name of a functional procedure pop up on the screen, and I'm going to give you a couple of seconds to determine whether you think it is a function or a procedure. So with our first contestant in our game show, let's have a look. Our first contestant is int to string. That is the method or subprogram that takes in a integer and converts it to a string. Is it a function or a procedure? What do you think? Function, procedure, function, procedure? The answer is it's a function. Okay. Let's look at our next contestant. Increase. So that takes an integer and it increases it by one normally. Do we use it a lot for, for repeat and while loops when we need a looping variable? Is it a function or a procedure? Which one do you think it is? Well, if you said procedure, you'd be correct. Now, our next contestant, show message. So we use this when we want to display something to the user on the screen. So the little box pops up. Hmm, is it a function or a procedure? If you said function, you'd be wrong because it's a procedure. So let's go to our next one, input box. So we use this normally to get some sort of value from the user. A box will pop up and the user types in a value and that gets sent back to the program. Is it a function or a procedure? It's a function, there we go. And then let's do the next one, next contestant, copy. You remember copy from our string handling? Is it a function or a procedure? It takes in a string and some values and it copies part of it. Is it a function or a procedure? It's a function. And now our next contestant, delete. That's also one of the string functions. It takes in a string with some uh, integers and it deletes part of the string. Hmm. Function or procedure? It's a procedure. And our second last contestant, we're now looking at some subprograms that we use for text file handling. If you remember our text file handling, that's the end of file. We normally use that in the while loop, while not end of file. Um, hmm, is that a function or a procedure? It's a function. And our final contestant, also from the, the text file handling algorithm, is a signed file. We assign a text file, and normally the string variable is assigned to a text file variable. Hmm, function or procedure? There you can see it is a procedure. So as you can see, there's a list of our functions. Into string, input box, copy, end of file. Those are all functions that we've used before. Where procedures that we might have used have been increase, show message, delete, and assign. So what does that mean? What, what, what exactly does it mean? Well, let's have a look at how we use functions. So I've got a whole bunch of scenarios here of how we use functions. And you'll notice that with functions, you can see there's always something in front of the function normally. And that's because a function returns an answer. It returns one result. So let's look at into string. You see, whatever's in the brackets there, whatever values are in the brackets, that's what we call parameters. That is the information that that function needs. So into string needs an integer. Now, that could be a number like that, or you could put in a variable that's of type integer, but it needs an integer as a parameter. That's, the, that's what we're putting in the brackets there. There's that 11. That's what we are sending to the function. It's almost like an input into the function. We're giving it that information, and it's going to send back that 11 and as a string. It's going to go to the function into string and convert it from the 11 number to the 11 string. And that result needs to be stored somewhere, and that's why our functions always have something in front of it with regard to we need to store it or, or use it somewhere. So into string returns a string, and that will be stored in SNUM. 
Now let's look at the second function that we looked at, input box. Have a look there at input box on our screen. Now this input box, this function, takes in three parameters. If you remember input box, it has three strings, and those strings are displayed um, at the um, so that you can see in the box, you can see there's a little error there. There should be a, a in the three, there should be another quote around that three. It's a little printing error there. But input box takes in three strings. And it then it asks a question. And then there's a little box where you type in a value and it sends that result back. Whatever's typed in the little box in the input box. And we need to store it somewhere. And that's what set, is sent back is a string. So we store it, for example, in S name. So that variable S name is going to be the answer what is sent back from the function. That 1, 2, and 3 string is what we're sending to the input box. Obviously, you wouldn't send through a 1, 2, and 3. You would send something more useful, like a question or something like that. But I'm just using that to show you those are three parameters. And those are all string parameters being sent to the input box function. And a string is being sent back. Okay, now let's look at the third function there, copy. This one takes in three parameters as well, but you'll notice that they're not the same type. The first parameter has to be a string, and the second and third variables have to be, or the parameters have to be integers. And it will copy from S name, copy from that string, copy from the first character for three, for three or characters. That's what copy does, and it sends back a string. So copy takes in input, it takes in a string and a integer and an integer those are those three parameters in the brackets and it sends back an answer it sends back only one answer and we store that and that type of answer is a string so we store that in s temp so into string input box and copy are all examples of string functions the reason we call them string functions is because they return strings it doesn't matter what input they take whether it's an integer or a whole bunch of strings or if it's a combination of them it always sends back a string. Our last function there is end of file. Now that is not a string function. That you'll look is slightly different because end of file is a boolean function. Do you remember what boolean is? No, it's not a ghost. It is a true or false when we refer to boolean. So that function returns a true or a false. It tells us are we at the end of the file? of f f would be a text file variable that's the parameter going in and it's sending back a true and a false and if it's sending back a true and a false we normally use that in for example a while while loop or a repeat loop when we've got some sort of condition or you could use it in an f statement because you are asking the question is it true or false but it needs to send back what one value it sends back a true or a false so that is a boolean function so what have we learned about functions? Well, functions, they take in information like parameters, and those parameters could be one parameter, could even be no parameters if you wanted to. But it takes in parameters or one parameter, they could be of different types, and they send back one answer. Okay, one answer only. And that type of variable that it sends back is the type of function it is. So copy is sending back a string. Input box is sending back a string. End of file is sending back a boolean. Okay, so do we understand functions? Are we putting the fun back in functions? Okay, now we need to become pros at procedures. So let's look at how we use our procedures in our programs. Does this look familiar? When we use increase, let's look at that first procedure, increase. The procedures also take in parameters. There's also values that we send to the procedure that we put in brackets. The I count in the increase example there, it needs an integer value as a parameter. But there's nothing in front of increase. There's no value being sent back. It just does something. In this case, it just takes I count and adds a number, adds a one onto it. It just does something. It's not returning anything necessarily. It's just changing I count. Show message. Do you see there's nothing in front of show message? Because it's not returning anything, it's just doing something. What is it doing? It's just displaying a box to pop up that says the word hello. It's nothing is being sent back, it's just doing it. Delete. There's nothing in front of delete, it's just we just call delete like it is, 
and it just does it. What is it doing? It's taking the variable s name, the string. This one takes in a string parameter followed by two integer parameters, and it's just deleting from that string, starting at position four for two characters. It just does it, and it changes s name, but it's not returning anything. It's not sending anything back that needs to be stored anywhere. A sign file. Again, there is nothing in front of a sign file because it just does something. What is it doing? It's taking that data.txt string and finding that text file and assigning it to the text file variable. So it just does it. There's nothing being returned. It just does something. So do we understand functions and procedures? Okay, so functions, we said. They take in parameters. It could be no parameters. It could be one parameter. It could be lots of parameters. Those parameters could be of different types. Those parameters are put in the brackets. Those parameters are the information that those functions need. And then the function will return an answer. One answer only. It could be a string. It could be an integer. It could be a boolean. The procedures, however... They also take in parameters. There could be no parameters or one parameter or lots of parameters. Those parameters could also be of different types. That is the information that that procedure needs in order to do its job. But then it just does its job. There's nothing that's being returned. The procedures just do something. They do what it needs to be done. It's not returning anything. Okay, does that make sense? Let's look at the summary basically. Let's recap. Remember, functions, they return one value only. Procedures are just called. So you just call the procedure and functions, you have, because it's returning a value, you need to have it stored somewhere. You can't just call into string in the middle of nowhere. You must have something is equal to into string because it needs to send back an answer and you need to store that answer somewhere or use it somewhere. Procedures aren't like that. You just call it and it does its job. And both functions and procedures need information in order to do its job. They need parameters. And you need to give it the right parameters. For example, we said copy needs a string and an integer and an integer. If you give it something different, it's not going to work. If you give the parameters in the wrong order, it still won't work. You need to give the information that it needs, that it's expecting. It needs a string, then a number, then a number. So parameters are the information the input that the function or the procedure needs. Okay, so these are functions, these are what functions and procedures are. They are little programs that run inside our program. So I hope that's been informative. I hope you are now functional with your functions and are pros at your procedures. In our next video, we'll look about how can we make our own functions. For more videos on this video series and for other videos for grade 11 and grade 12 work, please go to our YouTube channel. You can just search on YouTube for Mr. Long Education. Look for our blue and yellow logo and subscribe. We'd love to have as many subscribers as possible. Like our videos. Tell us what you are needing us to do so we can make more videos for you. You can also follow us on Facebook or follow our Twitter handle so you can keep up to date whenever we post new videos. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.